Hello again, my wonderful viewers. In the video response to evolutionalist chapter one, we were subject to the creationist idea of two types of science, observational or operational and historical science. To deal with this concept, we must ask ourselves two questions. Do scientists use those terms? And if yes, then why? So let's define our terms. Observational science is science that can be seen and done in the present, and historical science is science that deals with the past. Simple enough, right? But wait, we already have a problem. All science is observational science because all science involves making observations, whether it is observing a yardstick, Geiger counter, rock strata, etc. Creationists will, however, say that looking at fossils in rock strata constitutes historical science because no one was around to directly observe dinosaurs or any other prehistoric creatures, except for perhaps mammoths, mastodons, woolly rhinos, saber-toothed cats, etc. Ironically, despite what creationists want people to believe, direct observation can be completely untrustworthy. For example, there is a famous experiment in which a psychologist had several people watch a movie, and the people were asked to count the number of times a basketball was passed. What the people missed was a person in a gorilla costume walking directly through the center of the scene. I'll, of course, not argue that all observation is always untrustworthy, but it's a far cry from being perfect, not least because humans are imperfect. Why would a perfect god willingly impart the secrets of the universe unto imperfect beings who have, and still do, twist what the Bible says to fit their own agendas? The creationist website Adam4D points out that you can make the Bible say basically whatever you want. That Jesus wasn't the Messiah, that you should only eat grasshoppers with honey, that there isn't a punishment for those who reject God's word, etc. Now the answer to the questions I asked earlier is rather simple. Scientists do not use the terms observational or historical science. Science is science. In every science class I've ever taken, in every science book I've ever read, whether a textbook or one I just read for fun, the terms observational and historical science are never used. This shows that they are wholly creationist inventions. The problem that creationists have with science is that it clearly shows the Earth is far older and came into existence far differently than their antiquated book proclaims. As such, they whine that we can't trust the words of scientists. That is, unless the scientists say something that sounds like it vaguely supports creationism. But anyway. Creationists always talk about how we can't assume that the laws of physics that apply today haven't always applied in the past, with the obvious exception of the birth of our universe. However, the simple problem is that there's no reason to believe the laws of physics haven't always existed as they are since then. It is reasonable to assume the mantra of uniformitarianism, that the present is the key to the past, because there is no evidence to the contrary. There is no reason to believe that the laws of physics were in flux 6,000 years ago, but then magically settled on some arbitrary constants. Next, creationists say that all we can know about the past is educated assumptions. This phrase comes from the Answers in Genesis article, Two Kinds of Science. Unfortunately for the creationists, we can know more than simple assumptions about the past. For some things in the past have been supported beyond a reasonable doubt. Examples are evolution, look to the Wikipedia article, Evidence of Common Descent, The Old Age of the Earth, try 100 Reasons the Earth is Old, and The Big Bang, like background radiation, redshift, universal expansion, and the abundance of light elements. The article, Two Kinds of Science, says, open quote, while our assumptions could be accurate, it's always better to start with an eyewitness account, close quote. Numerous studies have shown that eyewitness accounts can be untrustworthy, but in a lot of cases, history for example, experts use eyewitness accounts to learn. We know much of what we do about history because eyewitness accounts have told us a lot about battles, people, and events. Eyewitness accounts about history can lie though. For example, there is no evidence that almost any of the events in the books of Genesis and Exodus actually occurred. However, science is empirical and thus ultimately based on sensory experience. Ergo, eyewitnesses must have seen experiments occur. The difference, though, is that in science, multiple people see the same experiment occur because scientists must produce reproducible results. In creationism, the Bible is taken as a perfect eyewitness account, despite the fact that it's riddled with fallacies. One example is Genesis 30, 38-39 that says, open quote, He set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the gutters, even in the watering troughs, where the flocks came to drink, and they mated where they came to drink. So the flocks mated by the rods, and the flocks brought forth striped, speckled, and spotted. Close quote. These sentences say that having animals mate in front of a striped background causes striped offspring, which we know today to be patently false. What animals see while they mate is of no consequence to the phenotypes of the offspring because phenotypes are the result of genes, something the biblical authors knew nothing about. The article also says, open quote, for example, some geologists take present day rates of radiometric decay and rock formation and imagine that the rates have always been the same. That's why they think the earth is so old. It's not. Close quote. Again, to claim that radiometric dating is inaccurate, one would have to present evidence that nuclear decay rates were different in the past. However, no one has brought forth evidence to support this. Creationists merely claim that no one observed the half-lives of atoms, which is ludicrous in and of itself. Also, radioisotopes consistently date rocks, which is how we know the method is accurate. 
The Bible is not a trustworthy source of universal origin, not least because the author or authors probably didn't take the Genesis account literally themselves. Non-creationist Christian sources say the point of the Genesis creation account is merely to point out that God created the universe, not all the scientific aspects of it. For reference, I would read the article, Genesis 1, Are the Six Days of Creation Literal or Figurative? This article takes a surprisingly objective view on scripture, one which the creationists could take a hint from. In summation, the concepts of historical and observational science are utterly non-scientific creationist inventions.